Thank you for watching this video. I'm Kunio Kojima from the JS Lab of the University of Tokyo. And we are going to talk about drivetrain design of Jackson series. These are Jackson series and its previous model. As you know, the left robot is shaft robot S1. And it participated in the DLC trials. Its most important feature is the water-cooled motor system. And the system is also used in Jackson series and contributes to its high torque speed performance. In Jackson series, some features are added, anti-impact armor and optimal body proportion. However, uh, the old Jackson's impact mitigation performance was limited and they could not run or jump. So, on new, on new Jackson, uh, for achieving dynamic motions like jumping, we adopted a new drivetrain system and a new frame structure. And it has obtained lightweight body and high back drivability. Achieving dynamic motion is challenging. During dynamic motions, robots are subjected to large impact forces. Then, joint must generate and absorb large torques. Our robots have already achieved high torque joint systems by water-cooled motors. However, uh, the higher torque joints generate, the higher bending moments are produced. Of course, frames must support higher rolls and have higher stiffness. Then, robots become heavier. Finally, uh, because human robots support its own weight by themselves, they we fall into the vicious cycle of weight and impact forces. This vicious cycle prevents robots from moving dynamically. For breaking this, this vicious cycle, we pre present a design method for reducing uh, frame loads per joint torques. How can we reduce frame loads of joint forks? The point is utilizing linear actuators. Rotary and linear actuators exert forces on frames differently. In the case of rotary actuator, actuators exert bending moments on frames. On the other hand, in the case of linear actuator, actuators exert translational forces on frames. Theoretically, no bending moments act on frames. In this way, by utilizing linear actuators as frame supporting structures, uh, we can reduce frame loads per joint torques, reduce robot weight, and Finally, reduce landing impact forces. This effect of linear actuators is already known and used in crane arms. However, we cannot apply this effect to robotic mechanisms easily. Since Crane arm has a single joint and a single frame. We cannot calculate loads acting on frames easily. However, in the case of robotic mechanisms, which is March DOS system, it's not so easy. For example, frame loads are affected by torques of adjacent joints and uh, robot postures. And this makes the calculation difficult. 
Therefore, for considering these effects, we propose the frame rose region. In our design method, first, we consider all the combination of actuator and joint types. Next, by using the frame load region, we calculate loads acting on frames. Finally, we adopt the structure of minimum loads. By using frame load region, we can compare frame loads quantitatively between different designs. About the frame load region, the frame load region denotes a region of moments which would act on a frame when joints generate torques within their output range. The frame load region is calculated through a conversion from joint torque output range to bending moments acting on a frame. This is the conversion between linear integrations. We convert the integrations with the constraints of drivetrain and kinematic chain. This is the comparison of frame loads between drivetrains. These three arms have different actuators at a proximal joint. Because the left column's arms has three rotary actuators, uh, three dimensional bending moments act on frames. The center column arm has one linear actuator, so two dimensional bending moments act on frames. And uh, because the light column arms have two linear actuators, so one dimensional bending moments act on frames. In this example, the maximum bending moment of the left arm is about 700 newton meters, but the right one is 470 newton meters. In this way, by using the frame load region, we compare frame loads quantitatively between different designs and find the actuator arrangement and joint configuration with the smallest frame loads. This is the adopted actuator arrangement of new junction. Each joint is cable-driven actuation, and uh, cables are stretched over the side and shank link. For example, a knee joint cable is fixed at an ankle, is stretched over shank ring, is twisted around knee pulley, and screwed at a hip joint. In this structure, these cables support tensile forces and reduce bending moments. Specifications of old and new junction. The drivetrain specification of old and new junction are almost the same. In fact, the differences of the gear ratio and the maximum torques are under 5%. However, a new junction's weight is 50 kg smaller than the old one. And the main contribution factor is frame structure. All the Jackson joints have rotary actuator, so large bending stress occur at the proximal part. New Jackson joints have linear actuators, so the bending moments are resolved into cable tensing forces and frames compressive forces and only small bending stress occur at the proximal part. From these results, we can tell that reducing frame loads per joint torques is effective for weight saving. These are achieved motions by Jackson series. 
all the Jackson have high torque and high speed performance. So it achieved squat motions with 70 kilogram barbell, uh, tennis swing motions, and skating motions. Then, new Jackson have high impact mitigation performance. And this enabled this dynamic jumping motions. Maximum COZ height is 0.3 meter, and the robot stayed in air for 0.5 seconds. Summary. When designing humanoid robots for dynamic motion, we fall into the vicious cycle of body weight and impact forces. For breaking the vicious cycle, we reduced frame loads per joint torques by utilizing linear actuators. And we proposed the frame load region for deciding the optimal linear actuator arrangement. And we found that the frame load region is useful as a design index for weight saving. And finally, we developed new Jackson and achieved dynamic motion of 0.3 meter COZ jumping height. Thank you for listening.